15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engines on. We have a lift off. Lift off on Apollo 11. Four forward, drift into the right level. Thirty seconds forward, drift. Hold back right. Okay, engine. Tranquility base is the full has landed. Roger, Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys back on the ground. We're still going to be doing it. Armstrong is on the move. We are on the ground now. Thirty-eight year old American standing on the surface of the moon. This July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for man. for the search was for posterity. What we believe that the people that follow us deserve better than what they have. And we also know that since it was the first, uh, in, 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 in mankind's first televised illusion of someone that's stepping on the moon, that piece of, that piece of television will be shown 50, 100, 200, 500 years from now. It's, it is a rare piece of television that will be shown out uh, in, in, into the future for well, many, many years. And they deserve better than what we had. I think we can give it to them. I probably didn't have any uh, specific feeling about the event as much as the fact that we had been able to uh, successfully transmit the images to the world. Um, the event of the first step on the moon historically was not something in a young engineer's mind. It was, how do I get the TV down? How do I process it? How do I get to Houston with no one uh, having a problem where it's not there? We had backups, but live was obviously the goal uh, to see something historic. Uh, playback's fine, but for uh, history, you want to see it live for the first time in history. Uh, so I was relieved, and uh, historically, I don't think... Uh, I ever thought about it much until years later, what it meant historically. Uh, probably looking back even now, it's much more significant to me than it was for years and years. That's one small step for man. It's pretty indelible. I remember sitting in my parents' bedroom in front of the old black and white zenith. It was truly an incredible moment, and I knew that I was witnessing something that was absolutely a turning point in human history. One, 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 die up, please, for me. Hi, I'm Clint Black. What 
do NASA rockets and my guitar have in common? Find out at nasa.gov. You, your go to press. Okay, you can copy that. And uh, for your information, the uh, pan was 107 decimal six. The tilt was negative two five four decimal four. This is Mission Control Houston. We're back now with live video inside the space shuttle flight control room, where the team, Orbit Two team of flight controllers, is excuse me, Orbit One team of flight controllers is helping the. Seven members of the Space Shuttle Endeavour crew through their day. Just saw quite a bit of Apollo anniversary related material and just a heads up coming up at noon, noon Central Time. We'll be having a, another break for those watching the NASA TV public channel and mission coverage. Houston Endeavour, recorders are on on 7 days 8. We copy. There will be another uh, Apollo 11 40th anniversary briefing. This one a round table where members of the media will be able to talk with a panel of experts on this history and also NASA NASA's current exploration plans that again will begin at noon central time. And there's quite a bit of other Apollo-related features that are available on the NASA website at www.nasa.gov. While that briefing was going on, the Endeavour crew got into their day. As you can hear, they're getting ready to start today's survey of the Space Shuttle's heat shield. This kicks off the robotics work in what's going to be a very robotics-intensive mission. It begins now with the survey of the starboard or right wing of the shuttle's leading edge of the shuttle's right wing. As you can see here in this graphic, they'll be using the shuttle's 50-foot robotic arm attached to a 50-foot extension, the orbiter sensor system that has a few different systems on it that allow teams on the ground to gather data that helps them build 3D images and computer models that allow them to compare the shuttle's heat shield as it is now to how it looked before flight so that they can find out if there are any damage that was done to the shuttle's heat shield during yesterday's launch. This is the first of many inspections the shuttle will be going through before it's finally declared safe for return to Earth at the end of the mission. This particular one is designed to look at some of the areas that will experience the highest temperatures during the shuttle's reentry 